Our supply chain is global and fragile. We have to face the fact that, among others, trade wars, viruses and climate change can trigger supply chain disruptions. Can we avoid them? Is there a remedy? Let's ask our experts, Ed Briswa from the American Chemistry Council and Robert Kiefer from REACH 24H. Can you define supply chain disruption and the consequences of such a disruption? Rather than focus on supply chain disruption, let's just talk about why supply chains exist. Supply chains exist because companies want to move goods uh, as quickly as possible, uh, in the most cost-effective way possible, through a country, through a region, uh, really across the entire world. Uh, we live in an era of trying to find where competitive advantage exists. We've gotten to the point where uh, technology, data, all of this helps us move goods and services efficiently, and that ends up benefiting the consumer uh, at the end of the day more than anything else. Supply chains actually produce uh, social welfare benefits at the end of the day, and if governments spend more time and money on shoring them up, it produces uh, you know, benefits for the consumer ultimately. Let, let's just talk about tariffs. Uh, you know, when you build a supply chain, you're making a couple of assumptions that the policy is going to stay the same, right? Your, your tariff rate is going to stay, stay the same. So when a government introduces that variable with an increased tariff rate, the company's got to make an assessment, okay, do I want to keep the supply chain and pay the tariff, or do I want to reconstruct it? Uh, and reconstructing it is not costless, right? Companies have to do, uh, reach out to other suppliers, maybe they have to move production, they can't just, you know, take the supply chain and move it into an entire new region without cost. Uh, this is expensive for companies. It, it, it really is a bottom line impact. So uh, I, I think uh, we've advocated the American Chemistry Council for elimination of tariffs, not more tariffs, because we know that the global supply chains, regional supply chains, they're in the benefit not only of our industry, but uh, really the, the entire world. To avoid supply chain disruption, it would be good to identify the causes in advance uh, in order to mitigate it, maybe. A company will intrinsically know where some you know, weaknesses of its supply chain might be and is going to focus on how they can make that supply chain better. Are the companies aware of their complete supply chain and potential weakest links within that chain? So it's important for the manufacturers to do a, um, a supply chain assessment to find out where their vulnerabilities are and their critical points and to assure that uh, uh, they have maybe secondary sourcing or they have uh, other means to get the product to where it needs to go. Okay, and are we able to manage and de-risk such a disruption? Um, those companies that take a proactive approach, yes. So um, if they do their due diligence and um, do their EH&S compliance auditing of their suppliers to make sure that they're in compliance with the local regulations. And is the border crossing, is that one of the biggest hurdles in a supply chain? I, I think logistics can be. I mean, trying to move a good as quickly as possible through a, a customs regime. Uh, there are plenty of policies out there to improve that performance with respect to time, um, you know, pre-shipment, um, uh, clearance, you know, expedited shipments, uh, single windows. I mean, there are lots of policies I think governments focus on both at the, the national level but also at the regional level. You know, when you have m similar policies that are more aligned uh, with respect to customs and, you know, digital trade, that is going to have uh, broad benefits for the industry. A disaster for one can be a new business opportunity for someone else. Are there winners uh, of a supply chain disruption? I, I don't think this is a zero-sum game. I mean, if you talk about international economics, cr crafting policies that expand the pie are going to cr generate more income, more wealth. Uh, it, it'll be broadly beneficial. If you craft a policy that is just designed to uh, disrupt, so to speak, you're creating a less efficient environment. Okay, let's get a little bit political. Eh? Your president, Trump, launched his trade war on China two years ago. Uh, what is the impact of this war on the chemical industry? So, President Trump and his administration, they correctly identified some very difficult practices and policies, you know, unfair trading practices in China. Uh, they issued a report that detailed all of these policies and practices 
Uh, we provided input into that report as the American Chemistry Council. We tried to convey to the administration that the tariffs were not the right tool, that creating a, a multinational coalition of concerned countries that share the U.S. concerns to address those problems in China, to apply compounded pressure on China to change its behavior, that was the better approach. At every step of the way, we found chemicals implicated uh, directly uh, on the U.S. list or on the China retaliatory tariff lists was that our exports to China, which is our third biggest market uh, after Canada and Mexico, dropped off significantly by a number of billions of dollars. Uh, and that was a growth market for us, especially since we, uh, our, our companies, you know, U.S. chemical manufacturers had been investing and are investing billions of dollars in new chemical manufacturing capacity here in the United States. Uh, over the last 10 years, we announced $200 billion of projects in the U.S. Many of those projects are predicated on exporting, and exporting in particular to China. What is the effect on the Chinese chemical companies? Um, there has been a uh, reduction in the manufacturing in China as well due to the tariffs. Um, and we were starting to see this slow down uh, as it approached the Chinese New Year this past year, which has now been compounded by the uh, uh, coronavirus pandemic, which has kind of shuttered several of the factories for at least a month or more. Maybe uh, is that in January 2020 an initial trade deal has been signed uh, between uh, US and China. How should we classify this first step? Like Mao, a journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step, or more like Neil Armstrong who said a small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Well, the conventional wisdom is that, that this phase one deal between the US and China has created more certainty. Uh, that's only partially true. We're not seeing tariff escalations right now, but the way the deal was constructed is that if China doesn't meet its commitments as a part of the deal, the tariffs could snap back, the U.S. could impose more tariffs. Uh, so there's still an element of uncertainty there. You know, we're still stuck with these higher costs, mm -hmm. uh, and we're advocating for a phase two deal as quickly as possible that gets rid of the rest of the tariffs. In an ideal world, what we'd like to see is the U.S. and China working together to eliminate their tariffs on chemicals, period, whether that's bilaterally or through a, a multilateral approach where you bring in other trading partners and you all, all try to drive towards zero. Getting that deal done this year, particularly in light of the fact that there's now much more uncertainty with respect to global economic growth and the global economy, eliminating all of those tariffs would do wonders for actually injecting a little bit more fuel into the global economy. Robert, anything to add there? I believe on the uh, China side, they've also been making some uh, uh, exceptions to the tariffs as well for Chinese manufacturers because in light of the, um, the pandemic and uh, uh, trying to stimulate or continue the growth as well. So, and I think they've even have some tariffs in, uh, in some cases to help, at least on the Chinese side. Thank you for your wisdom. They say two of a trade never agree, but you did agree, and we can all agree that united we stand, divided we fall. So let's stand united. <laughs>